This programme fuses magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection and showmanship. I achieve the results you'll see through a varied mixture of those techniques. At no point are actors or stooges used in the show. This is Port Merion in North Wales, where the cult TV series The Prisoner was filmed back in the 60s. There's all sort of colouring seems to change, and the eyes were piercing all the time. The eyes were very, very, very intense. And these are the rules for a staring competition. The first person to look away or blink loses the game. Guy in the baseball cap. Uh, to me. What's your name? I'm Jamie. Jamie, come sit here for me. Look at me. Yeah, you'd be good at this. <clears throat> Go. What's up? I just don't feel like... You don't feel right? No. Do you want to stop? Yeah. OK. All right. Anyone else? <laughs> After a while, I started getting this nasty feeling deep down. Sort of in my stomach area, right up to my throat. It just felt as if he had like some type of control over me. Could you come round for me? Excellent. And come and stand just here. Brilliant. Ready? Go. Oh. Can stop? Oh. You want to stop? Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Take a deep breath. And relax and it goes. My eyeballs felt to be burning. I got this sort of feeling in my head, this sort of pounding in my temples. They're really pounding right across here. Oh, excuse me a minute. And I just felt it was, a feeling, it was a feeling of intense terror, but it wasn't a terror. I wasn't going to run away from it. I was just going to knock the living shite out of him, basically. That, that was the feeling. That, that's as close as I can express it. The adrenaline was really good. My heart felt like I could feel it pumping. There was just something there that was really, really menacing. I, I, I couldn't say exactly what it was. It was, there was something unknown. There's an old and obscure psychic feat of apparently seeing with your fingertips. And a few people, even to this day, do claim to have this ability. I can certainly achieve the same results, but through methods I don't believe to be psychic. Uh, well, thank you very much for coming along to this vintage eyeglass emporium. Um, now, you may or may not know that I'm a huge fan of the whole area of Victorian charlatanism. There was a girl from that period, a 15-year-old girl, called Lillian Keeble, flaming red hair. She toured the houses of rich people with a parlour act, which she called dexterous vision. And what Keeble claimed uh, was that she could see through the fingertips, these two fingertips here of her right hand. Now, I'm a huge fan of her, and I've dug and dug for information on her. She's not that well known about, um, and I've sort of come up with bits and pieces allow me to piece together what her methods may have been. This is why I've asked you here. So, uh, the first thing that she would do in her act was as follows. Can I maybe try this with you, uh, Michael? Can I just swap places with Michelle? I'll ask you to come around here. All right. Now, she would ask somebody to write down uh, a sentence or a phrase. Now, this is entirely up to you what you write, OK? You're gonna, I'm going to get you to write it down on this piece of card. If you take those for me, now, obviously, it's very important I don't see what you write, so wait till I've turned away, but anything you like, a phrase or a short sentence. I'll face away while I do it. Don't let anyone see. Tell me when you're done. Yeah. OK, and just hold the card like that between your hands like this so I can turn around safely and not see it. Sure. Is that safe? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Michelle, can I bring you back around here again, this side? If you come and stand here. Now, your point of view here, Michelle, is just to make sure that I'm not going to cheat or turn and look. So you're essentially going to hold my gaze. Uh -huh. 
All right, so you know I'm not going to look away. All right, now, Michael, what I want you to do is to hold the card, um, so the card is flat, but writing side down. Yeah. And if you come around here just a little bit so that I can put my hand... All right. I'm not going to touch the card. Now, what's interesting about her methods, of course, is this is 1845, all right? They were simple, but weirdly, uh, 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 the word big, is that right? A big? Yeah. Uh, hell, two, maybe that's hello, a big hello. Is this right? Am, yeah. I, am I close? Yeah, yeah. That's right. a big hello, two, uh, 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 all matching. Or watching even a big hello to all watching. Can you show the camera? I might. I... Let's have a look. What does it say? A big hello to all watching. Thank That's you amazing. so much. I'll ask you to uh, go stand back there again. There's no human possible way that he could do that. Well, is he, he is a human, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not normal. The highlight of the act for me was when Lillian would give her abilities to somebody else. So, um, Michelle, I'll do this with you. If you can just come around here for me and point those two fingers for me like that. Now keep your other fingers in. Now look at me. I'm going to give you the ability that Lillian had, you'll be able to see with your fingertips. Just press your two fingers up against mine. You will be able to do it. You must believe that. Look at me. You must believe that. Good. Okay, keep your fingers like that. Don't move them. Now I'm going to write down, we'll keep it relatively simple, a two-digit number. All right? I will write this behind my back so you can't even catch a glimpse of uh, anything or the movement of my arms or anything that might give it away. All right? A two-digit number, that's all I'm going to tell you. All right, and I'll ask you just to, it's there, it's written just there. All right, so if you keep your fingers there, you are underneath where the number is written. So all you've got to go on is your instinct now. So imagine perhaps a white screen and allow the image of a number to appear on it. It is a two digit number. 32. 32. Some reason, why, why did you say 32? Don't know. Okay, uh, it is. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! That's amazing. I'm physically shaking. You, you are physically shaking. <laughs> That was just weird, was the only way to describe it. Because I could actually see it in my head, the way he'd written it. It was, it was just, I, I mean, tears came to my eyes emotionally. It was just very strange. Absolutely amazing. Don't know how he does it. Cardiff, lovely place. She lives there. And home of the reasonably famous Cardiff Market. Here I am casually mixing with the locals and playing a game where they can win some money and I can look revoltingly clever. Have you got a wallet on you or a purse or some money? Yes. I'll, uh, I, can I just see? Don't show me how much money you got, but just show me uh, what you keep your money in. Excellent. Have you got any loose change in you as well, or is everything in there? Everything in there. Everything's in there. All right, so here's the game. I'm going to try and tell how much money you've got in that wallet. Yeah. If I'm more than 50 pence out, you win 100 pounds. All right? Five twenty pound notes. You don't have to put any money in it yourself, um, so you got nothing to lose apart from your dignity. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> let me ask you a few questions. You work here, obviously. Yes. Do you drive in? Do you walk in? Catch a bus. Okay, great. Do you go shopping on the way home? Sometimes. Okay, married? No. 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 Are you in a rush to get to work in the morning? Usually, yes. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to write down an amount and put it in this envelope. All right. Don't look, because it'll spoil the surprise. Look at me. <laughs> okay. Okay, hang on to that for me. Great, thank you. Uh, Would you please count the amount of money you've got? Tell us how much you got. I've got thirty pounds of notes. Yeah, keep going. There's some more. Thirty-five, fifty, five, seventy, eighty, ninety, thirty-six. Thirty-six, yeah. And 35 pence. 36 pounds, 35p, and some that. My lucky stone. All right. Um, 36 pounds, 35p, yep. Yep. Put the rest of the money back in the wallet. Right. I think I'm all right. First of all, it's very important that none of us had asked you how much money you had on you. No. The exact money was 36 pounds. 35 pence. 35 pence. Have a look. It says... 36 pounds, 31. 36 pounds, 31. Four pence off, um, which leaves me safely from the 50 pence limit. Thank you very much indeed. I can't believe that. <laughs> I was a bit gutted because I thought he wasn't going to get it, to be honest with you. There's no way anybody could have known what was in my purse. No, I didn't even know what was in my purse, so, yeah. I just can't believe he got it, to be honest with you. I can't believe it. 
In part two, I meet Ninja. Inside my head now is chaos. And we get to play with Simon. I'm just, I'm stunned. Okay, you have a wallet on you? I have. Okay, will you show me where it is? Just don't take it out, but... There. Is that inside pocket? All right. Yeah. I'm going to go into here, but I'm going to keep looking at you. I will take nothing, but I'll tell you everything, as Keeble used to say. Right. And you hold my gaze there, that's a black wallet. All right. There's um, silver, a silver card, and a, uh, and a blue card. A silver card maybe is a, I think, I mean, hang on. Yeah, it's a visa card. I can see the visa symbol. All right. That's oh, a fiddly. Ah, oh, it's a receipt. Um, okay, that looks that looks like a a cab receipt. Twenty um, eighth. Maybe that's the date. Maybe that was on the twenty eighth that you used that. Uh, it's for seventy, uh, not seventy. Uh, ten pounds. It's a ten pounds cab receipt. There is. So I'm trying to get everything back. There's a book of stamps. You have two missing. You've taken two out, and there's a bit of there's a folded paper in there. Money, I take it. There's. No, it's not. There's no money in there. You've got no money in your wallet. It looks like a shopping list. Uh, apples, <laughs> bananas, oranges, <laughs> and loo roll. Lovely. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you to take. to ask you to take that out and verify everything I've said. Let's have a look. I certainly have the stamps. Two missing. Two missing. There's um, a Visa card. Nine double o nine, I think. The last figure. You might need to turn it over. The nine last. Nine double o nine. Let's have a look. Extraordinary. There was a blue card. That, oh, these that, are the two that, that I was Tesco seeing. Tesco shopping card. All oh, right, okay. That's the taxi receipt. Let's have a look. That's, that's is quite extraordinary. I don't know how you knew that. There's the 28. It says number 28. I thought number that was a date. 28, and it's for £10. Pounds. Can we see that? Can we just get all this? I don't know how you do it. And what else did I mention? The card. Shopping list. Oranges. Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel. Apples, oranges, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Some less savoury items. <laughs> I'm delighted. I am astonished, I have to admit. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank what you. amazed me most was the taxi card. Until this morning, I was going to come by car. So no, nobody knew I had a taxi receipt in my car, in my wallet. I did not know myself that the number 28 was written on that receipt. It, 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 I'm completely, utterly baffled beyond my comprehension how this is done. I'm going to try and tell you how much money you've got on you. I'll get within 50p of it, or if I don't, you win £100. OK? Excellent. All right. So let me ask you a few questions. Um, how did you get here today? Bicycle. By bicycle. All right, OK. OK, if you went out for a meal, how much would you spend, roughly, per head? 30 quid. 30 quid, all right, reasonable, all right, great. And um, do you drive? No. No. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll try and get as close as I can. Is it within 50p or you win 100 quid? Um, don't look. I'll scribble something down there. Okay, you hold on to that for me. Will you count your money? Take your time. Three pounds. <clears throat> so what's that? Three thirty-one. Three thirty-one. What you got in there? Just ten. So it's thirteen pounds thirty-one. I said I'd get within fifty p. Have a look. It's actually uh, thirteen pounds thirty-one. It's spot on. I'm quite proud of that one. Well done, mate. Cheers. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh. Inside my head now is chaos. It's obliterated. I can't see how he is, Donny. I'm gobsmacked. Imagine if instead of trying to work out what your complicated friends want for their birthdays, you could just go out and get whatever you like and then convince them that that's what they want. Life would be so much easier. And if you come and take a seat just over here, sure. just there. Just there. Thank you very much. Excellent. So, uh, we spoke on the phone uh, a few days ago. Yes. And I asked you uh, to write down something you'd like for your birthday. 
Yes. It also asked you to sign the back of it when I spoke to you and gave you these instructions so that basically when you brought it with you today, which I hope you have done, you uh -huh. know that no one's going to steam it open or switch it or do anything with it. Absolutely. All kept secret? Very much so. Excellent. All right. Well, I have bought you a present. <laughs> now, don't get overexcited. It okay. is in the big box behind you. Right. Right? <laughs> it may be a small present in a big box. Right. Or it may be a big present in a big box. Okay. The size of the box will not necessarily give you any clues. Sure. All right. When you walk into a shop and you see something that you know you have to have, mm -hmm. what is that feeling like? Describe it for me. Uh, I guess it's quite sort of sudden and you sort of, you have a, a, a definite um, positivity about it. And often you'll go away and see other things, but then you come back to the thing you saw first. And Excellent. It's like, you know. Well, just take that feeling. I just sort of amplified a bit for me because it is a really good feeling. It's okay. important to understand that feeling of positivity that sure. you describe. Okay. Um, and also very nice to meet you and thank you for coming on the show. Let me explain to you how I bite gifts or presents for people, all right? And this is the best way to handle, bar none, the, the, the problem of you know what to settle for when you're gonna buy gifts for somebody that's a little bit difficult to buy for, all right? Now what I do is rather than recycle the same sort of two tired bottles of wine or, or box of chocolates, which are no fun to receive, I go out and I buy anything and then I make that person fall in love with it, all right, by creating a strong feeling of desire for that object. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And it absolutely works. They get all sort of pumped up, you know, they get that feeling of that positivity you were describing. They beam excitement for it. Um, and, you know, it's a win-win thing because they get a present that they love and, you know, I get rid of some stuff out the back of my kitchen cupboard or whatever. But what I want you to really understand about this, because it's important, is that that feeling is so strong, can be so extreme that it can replace the memory of what they actually wanted. So even though two days before they may have said, I want X, whatever that is, you know, like a really nice car, like a BM or an Xbox or something like that, something they really wanted, suddenly now they think they always wanted what I got them. You know, and they're like, well, why would I want another car or an Xbox? That'd be useless to me. And suddenly this thing is useless to them because they're so delighted and surprised by what I got them that they forget what they originally wanted. Does that make sense? It actually replaces that memory. Yes. Yeah, yeah. excellent, cool. Good, so you can have anything you like. What's your dream present? A BMX bike. A BMX bike? Yes. That'd be fantastic. And that would make you feel great, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would fulfill a childhood dream. Really? Is it a childhood dream to have one? <laughs> I never excellent. got one when I was a kid. You never got one when you were a kid, so it'd be great to have one. Okay. Do you want to have a look? Yes. Yes, excellent. Come and have a look. You ready? Yes. What colour of it is? What did you have in mind? Red. Red? Yeah. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> you want to grab that? Good, nice and light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just put it over here. Sort of thing you had in mind? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was this really a childhood dream to have one? <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, you got all red. I'm that, just you, amazed. I was just no, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm delighted. Well, a happy birthday. I hope it's... Uh, Thank you very I don't know a lot about bikes. So I hope it's the right sort. And uh, out of interest, what did you write? I've got it with me if I still... And what, what did you, what I did wrote you write? I wrote a BMX bike, is what I wrote. So when you came in here, you were wanting a BMX bike? <laughs> yeah. yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's probably not the case. If you can detach okay. yourself from what's happened here a little bit, was it really a BMX bike you wanted when you came in? That's what you? I'd written down, yeah. You may have done, right. but that's very unlikely. Are you sure? If you think back, are you sure you're right? BMX bike is what you want. That absolutely feels right, isn't it, when you think about what you want? Yeah, absolutely, because yes? that's what I wrote down, and yeah. that's why I'm so flabbergasted that it's there. Take it out, have a look. No one's touched this, have they? Where's it been, <laughs> Where's it been since you wrote it? It's been in my wallet. In your wallet. Go on, have a look. No, even. I'm shaking. Let's just have a look at the back. You, know, you signed That's your name across it. This is the date and the time. It was ten past one on Saturday. Ten past one last Saturday. Yeah. Okay. But genuinely, you haven't. No one's touched this since you wrote it. No, because I signed it over here, so you couldn't do it. Let's just have a look. Leather jacket. Did you want leather jacket? No, I wanted to be a max. So why did you write leather jacket? I didn't. You didn't write leather jacket. That's your handwriting. That's isn't my it? handwriting as well. This is what you want. This yeah? is what I want. Yeah. All right. Any idea why you wrote that? No. That gives you that feeling of yes. Spontaneous positivity. Yes. That. Yes. Not yes. this. You don't want no. that. That's useless to you. Absolutely. So you're happy with your present? As am I. Congratulations and happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> 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 oh my god. I'm genuinely a bit freaked out. In a nice way. I came in here thinking, if I can suss this out, if there's some kind of thing going on that, that you know, I can work out logically, I'm just going to do it and, you know, I'm not going to be an arse about it. I'm going to play along and... <laughs> but 
I'm just, I'm stunned. That's definitely my right, and that's my J, and I never, I've got no need for a leather jacket, and I don't know what's going on. What's my name? He's gonna have me in a pickle jar by two, I know it. Okay, hold on to that. Okay, how much have you got? Count what you've got. Hold that one. Thirty. Thirty quid? Yeah. Thirty-two. Thirty-two, yeah, go on, keep it going. Yeah, thirty-two, 32 fifty. Thirty-three, fifty. Good for you, it's a lot of money. Have a look at what I wrote. Thirty-three, fifty. And I wrote? Four pounds fifty. Four pounds fifty. Which is wrong. Yes. Which means, after a hard day in doing this and not losing once, what are you going to spend it on? Um, clothes maybe. I don't know. Clothes. Invest it wisely. Thank you. Very sensible. Congratulations, Zach. Uh. <laughs> I'll get that off you again. Uh. No, good. Congratulations. <laughs> At first, I thought maybe I won't get the hundred pound, but then when I got it, I was just like, oh yeah. So if you found yourself wanting a BMX too, this is probably why. Very nice to meet you and thank you for coming on the show. Let me explain to you how I bike gifts or presents for people, all right? And this is the best way to handle, bar none, the, the, the problem of you know what to saddle for when you're gonna buy gifts for somebody that's a little bit difficult to buy for, all right? Now what I do is rather than recycle the same sort of two tired bottles of wine or, or box of chocolates, which are no fun to receive, I go out and I buy anything and then I make that person fall in love with it, all right, by creating a strong feeling of desire for that object. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And it absolutely works. They get all sort of pumped up, you know, they get that feeling of that positivity you were describing. They beam excitement for it. Um, and, you know, it's a win-win thing because they get a present that they love and, you know, I get rid of some stuff out the back of my kitchen cupboard or whatever. But what I want you to really understand about this is that that feeling is so strong, can be so extreme that it can replace the memory of what they actually wanted. So even though two days before they may have said, I want X, whatever that is, you know, like a really nice car, like a BM or an Xbox or something like that, yeah. something they really wanted, suddenly now they think they always wanted what I got them. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah. excellent, cool. Good, so, you can have anything you like. What's your dream present? A BMX bike. This program fuses magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection and showmanship. I achieve all the results you'll see through a varied mixture of those techniques. At no point are actors or stooges used in the show. Blackpool, the Las Vegas of Britain, apparently. There's an epidemic of street crime reported in Russia where people are bemused into handing over their belongings to scam artists. I thought Blackpool holiday makers would be perfect to try it on. Now this worked on about two thirds of the people I approached. Excuse me, mate. Sorry, you don't know where the um, the pleasure beach is, do you? Pleasure beach. Is this yeah. whole area the pleasure beach, or? No, just that end piece. It's straight down there, is it? Yeah. Okay, you don't. It's straight down here. Yeah. Down the prom. Excellent. You don't mind me asking, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You're happy to give that to me. Okay. Yeah, you're holiday maker. Absolutely no. I don't know the area that well. Sure, you haven't got the time, have you? No. no. Great. Can I just no. give you that? Can I just grab your wallet off you? Thanks. Can I just grab that from you? Thanks. Thank you ever so much. I'll take that. I know it's such a hot day, isn't it? All right, so straight down there, down the end and on the right. Yeah, yeah. nice way. All right, thank you very yeah, much. Just walk out there. All right, lovely. Thanks. Bro. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thank Oh, 
Sorry, can you give that back? This guy comes up and uh, the next thing is I'm sort of minus a wallet. You know what I mean? And then I'm thinking, thieving rat bag. Gonna slap him, you know what I mean? The wife's tried many times, but <laughs> she never succeeded. Many things we misread as meaningful are quite ordinary coincidences. For example, it's not unlikely that occasionally someone will phone you after you've been thinking about them. But we give these things value to make sense of our lives. If you'd like to have a seat, Jane. Okay. Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you both very much indeed. Before we start, it's very important you have a playing card in your mind, all right? So I want this to be a free choice. So colour-wise, you've got red or black. So which would you rather have? Red. Red, which is uh, diamonds and hearts. Any preferred suit out of those two? Hearts. Hearts, OK. And number-wise, so you've got between one and ten. Not, don't, again, don't, but not okay. three, because there are three of us, but a number? Seven. Seven, OK, so seven of hearts, okay. all right? You happy to...? Yeah. Have that card in your mind as you do it? Yeah. Happy that was a free choice? Yeah. Okay, great. Jonathan as well, if you can think of the seven of hearts as well for me. Excellent. You've got a deck of cards in front of you. Now, you'll notice um, I've been delightful enough to put these into new deck order so you can see that they're all there. Do have a look and check that they are indeed all present. Happy with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Then I'd like you to gather up the cards for me and take them under the table and to shuffle them under the table as best as you can without dropping any. Please bear in mind, at no point during this am I going to touch those cards. All right, those will now remain in your hands throughout all of this. OK, great. While you do that, and feel free to stop whenever you like, I'm going to tell you three stories. Three stories of coincidence. I promise you these are absolutely real. As far as I know, these stories did happen. Also, let me ask you, how long have you two been together for? Oh. 72 years. I think it's about 18 years. Is it 18 years? Yeah. It but is I'm, that long. I'm doing it dog years. <coughs> Um, the, the reason why I ask is that these stories also tie in with the idea of relationships and what goes on between people, all right? The first tale of coming to the first one of the three, this was told to me by my flatmate, Stephen, who I live with in uh, Bristol. And uh, he'd been going out with a girl called Marie, and they were sitting on this park bench at a place called Brandon Hill in Bristol, looking up at a very starry sky. Marie said that she'd never seen a shooting star. So Stephen's like, well, we should, we should wish for one, and they do. They're mucking around, but they wish for it out loud. And no sooner were those words out of their mouth, that a big shooting star shot across the sky and, you know, they're dumbfounded. And, you know, Stephen comes back and tells me this story and he's almost in tears. And you think on the one hand, oh, that's amazing and you love it, but on the, you know, you're sort of also thinking in the back of your mind, well, yes, but aren't there shooting stars every ten minutes and you don't normally notice them? But you kind of don't want to say, well, it's just a coincidence because it's coincidences like that that can absolutely make people fall in love that you could base a ten-year relationship on. I don't think for them it was, I think, Maybe he went down on her that night, but I don't think they ever saw each other again. But it's a lovely story. Um, you've got the cards under the table. I'd like you to please reach in and pull out a card, turn it around, and put it back in so it goes in the wrong way. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Yeah. So all the others are face up and one's going back in face down. Does that make sense? Have you done that? Yeah. Great. And then give them another little mix for me. The second story of coincidence, um, this, is, this is more amazing. It's absolutely true. Again, this was a guy who worked for a car repair service that we can't name, who was out uh, in the middle of the night, and this is in the middle of nowhere, all right, fixes the car that he has to deal with, and is then walking back to his van. The car is now driven off, and he walks past a phone box, and the phone starts ringing in the box. So he's in the middle of nowhere, he goes in and answers it and picks it up, and it's his wife. And she's saying, oh, can you remember to pick up some bread and some milk on the way home? And he says, well, yeah, okay, but how did you how did you know to ring this number? And she says, no, I just rang your new mobile number. And he's like, no, you just rang a phone box in the middle of nowhere. And she says, no, 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 I call. And she gets this bit of paper. Um, and she realizes she hasn't called his mobile number. What she's done, weirdly, she's got his payroll number written down and she's called that number instead of his mobile number. And his payroll number just happened to be the number of a phone box, which also happened to be the same phone box he happened to be walking past at that time. It's amazing. And it really is difficult to dismiss that just as a coincidence because it's easier somehow to believe emotionally certainly that people in some sort of relationship when they're in love or together maybe some communication goes on between them which the rest of us don't get in on somehow all right um so you've got the cards under the table you've got one card around the wrong way yep one card around the wrong way give them please do give them another little mix so you know they're all shuffled the third tale of coincidence i'm not going to tell you but i'm hoping that you'll be telling everybody this story tomorrow the card that you've both been thinking of, it was the... Seven of Hearts. The Seven of Hearts, was that right? Seven of Hearts, it was, yeah. We'll just bring the cards out from underneath, put them face up on the table. And if you just... 
Face up, that's right. Just, I don't want to touch them. Just spread them out. You, you, you should each have a card face down. Just give them a good spread. Do you want to just find that card? There it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And if you just want to move that forward and move that forward for me. Oh, that's mine. Excellent. You want to turn that one over, James? Sure. <sighs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Big moment. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. Who love you and me? <laughs> No, that's extraordinary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. A pleasure. Wow, fantastic. I'm so startled. I could not begin to imagine, and I can only assume that Darren has some sort of Because normally powers. the card is forced on you in some way, when people, yeah. they hold out the cards. I don't know how they do even that, but you know they force it on you in some way. The fact that the, the deck of cards never left my hands. Never left the, the table, table, then under her hands. I don't know how he did it. I I'm just, amazed. I don't understand. When I had to turn my card over, I still, up until the moment when I turned it, still didn't think it would be the seven of hearts. I kind of knew it probably would be, because I know how good Darren is, I don't know how he does it, but at the same time, every logical fibre of my being was saying, it cannot possibly be the seven of hearts, because you shuffled them. And the fact that we both completely had free will in turning in the card that we turned over, and... And you chose via free will. Probably a microchip in it. I... Hmm. Yes, that's how he does it. It's covered in honey. <laughs> oh, I remember I used to come here as a child, and it's still really shit, isn't it? Let's be honest. But I couldn't leave without visiting the pleasure beach and playing a fairground game with the tourists, where who knows, one lucky lady might even win a finger ring from me. Your name is Angela. Angela, very good to meet you. And Georgie. 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 Excellent. Okay. Um, can you have a look at that for me? Empty ring box, ring box, and a ring box. Yep. And this. A ring which we borrowed from a jeweler's not too far around here. It's worth two and a half thousand pounds. It's an 18 karat white gold ring with a diamond on the top. This is a genuine, very nice, expensive ring. I've got to play a little game involving this ring. Right. You may win the ring during the course of the game. If that happens, uh, you'll understand that you win the ring, which is great, but we have to give two and a half thousand pounds to the jewellers that we got this off. <laughs> so, in the nicest possible way, the idea of this for me is that you don't win the ring, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, okay. Understand. Can I? Um, can I borrow that? Yes, sir. And the other two, I'm going to keep empty. Thank you. Mix them up so you don't know which is which. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Come> right back. <laughs> All right, we just hold out a hand each, nice and flat, so we've got one there, one there, and <laughs> one there, one there, and one here, great. Okay, now if you put a hand out for me, one hand flat, I'm gonna give you that, and one there, and one for me. All right, here's the game. You're gonna get a maximum of five exchanges. I will count one, two, three, four, five. Each time I count a number, you're allowed to exchange a couple of boxes. You don't have to, and it doesn't matter if one of you does all the exchanging and one of you doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. There is a certain psychology to this. There are certain moves I expect you to make, so your task is to try and work against that, all right? So that one of you ends up with the ring. Obviously, the odds are sort of in your favor because there's two of you and only one of me. All right, so here we go. One, your first move. Anyone going to swap? Two. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you don't have to if you don't want, all right? Three. <laughs> Four. And there's one more. Five. <laughs> Three. I'll stick. <laughs> Four. I'll stick. <laughs> Five. Sticking as you are? Yeah. Alright, excellent. Okay. Sophia, yes? Yes. Can you open your box? No ring. Let's just show the camera. So it's one down. I'll put that away, I'll get rid of it. Right. Uh, uh, uh. No, Before you look, <laughs> I'm gonna offer you a chance if you want to change your mind, okay? okay? I wouldn't normally do this. I'll give you a clue. The clue is you're wrong, it's in this one here. Okay. Alright? That was your clue. You don't have to believe me, but let me explain. Probably by me saying it's over here, you wouldn't believe me. 
Uh -huh. In fact, why would you believe me? Because why would I tell you where the ring is? Now, that means I could say it's here just to make you want to stick with that one even more. Uh -huh. So you might think I'm saying it's here just to catch you out and make you stick with that one. If you think I'm doing that, catch me out and go for this one, yeah? Okay. Or if you think I'm just being honest and telling you the truth, it's still there. Okay. Do you want to change? Yeah. <coughs> you do want to yeah. change. <laughs> sure? Yeah. Okay, open the box. Can't believe you fell for that one. <laughs> Excellent, fantastic. You get rid of that. Uh, which of course leaves me with the ring. Thank you very much. I thought, is he like seeing that so I give him the box? Or is he seeing that so I keep it? I don't know. And Sophie was going, keep it, keep it. <laughs> Angela, yeah? Yeah. Open the box. Okay, nothing. I'm going to show the camera. All right, bad luck. Get, hang on, hang on a minute. Oh, sorry. Just talk this through now. I'm going to give you a chance to change your mind. Let me just point out, aside from whatever games I'm playing, mathematically, mm -hmm. you've got twice as much chance of winning if you change at this point. I'll explain why, all right? You've got a one in three chance of that being the ring, which means you've always got a two-thirds chance of being wrong. You've always got a two-thirds chance that it's one of the others, all right? So we know it's not that one. It actually means you've got a two-thirds chance of it being this one here. It is counterintuitive, but it is true. Are you going to stick or are you going to change your mind? You're trying to change my mind. <laughs> what do you want to do? I'll stick. You're going to stick? Yeah. Are you sure? Positive. Open the box. I'm sure I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have told you all that if I'd have wanted you to change. Excellent. Well done, well that? done. Great, right, okay. Thank you. Which, of course, uh, yes. means that uh, yeah. I end up with the ring, but uh, thank you so much. I, I was uh, convinced I had it. It was a look on Dylan's face. I was convinced I had the ring. The way he looked as much as say, oh, what do I do now? Do I, you know, I'm going to have to pay for this ring. She's got it. I'm pretty shocked because uh, I was expecting some kind of trickery, but obviously he was just so confident in his own persuasive powers or knowledge of what we do based on what he said. So yeah, it was very cleverly done. Yeah, it was very cleverly done. Brilliant. Totally enjoyed it. In the next part, we'll meet more confused holiday makers and look at the lost art of table tipping. Those tables were definitely possessed. <laughs>which way the, the actual pleasure beach is, the fun fair? The, the pleasure beach? I'm not really from round here. I think if you're here, if you follow the main one, if you follow down, right. just go down this road here, yeah. keep going, and it's on your left-hand side. So, it's basically, it's, it is, so it is down there? Yeah. Because that's the, that's the tower, isn't it? But it's, uh, you don't mind me asking, you do you? No, no, no. No, you're no, happy to, to give that Thank to me. You. Okay, so it's, it's down there. No. Great, all right, sorry about that. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, thanks ever so much. Uh, yeah, great, so it's just down that way. Can you just grab that, just for a second, can you just grab your watch and uh, then you've got a, a phone on you as well, that'd be terrific. Can I just grab your, uh, thanks, I'll take that off, lovely. Cheers, I'll just grab your uh, phone as well and your house keys, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so it's just literally just down there, yeah? yeah. Lovely, I'll grab that. So it's straight yeah. down there and... Keep going, on your left-hand side as you go further down the road. All right, lovely, thanks ever so much, cheers mate. Thanks. Thank you, you're fine, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, thank you. Sorry. It's difficult to explain because somehow it felt natural to give them to him. Oh, I'm sorry, did I? Until I got a few yards down the road and then I started to think, what's happening here? Can you just hold that a second? Cheers. Great, I'll just grab the others back off you so I can keep them. Cheers, thanks ever so much. Thank you. Cheers. I think you're heading that way, buddy. Thanks ever so much. Cheers. The Winter Garden Ballroom was built in the late 19th century and it sits amongst Blackpool's lights and faded glamour. That's over a hundred years of dance and movement experienced in this space. Some people think this energy can be retained in the very fabric of a building. So we invited some local dancers and their friends to try and tap into this imaginary force. Thank you very much for coming. The reason why I've asked you here is I want you to experience something which dates back to around the time that this room was opened. 
uh, and was a precursor to the now more familiar Ouija board that I'm sure many of you will have heard of. It is a little startling, but I would ask you please to embrace it and to go with it and to find it fascinating rather than frightening. Now, let me grab this. Thank you. So, everybody just look at me. I'm going to choose uh, a few of you for this. Uh, let's have you. I want you just to check the table for me, that there's nothing uh, strange about it. Feel free to lift it up and uh, look around. Chap there as well. Can you come forward, please? Again, just do the same thing there. Just have a good look. Just check there aren't any wheels. Thank you. And let's have... Yes, you, if you can stand there. One, two, three, four, and... Five. I want you to come forward. Great. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah? Sarah. Shh. Yeah, you'd be great. Thank you. All right, let me explain what I want you to do. Um, first thing I'd like is for everybody else to form a circle around me. All right? That's a wide circle, so give these guys here some space. Just form a circle right the way around me. Quick as you can, please. All right, in a moment, I'm going to ask you guys here to place your hands on the table. All right? Fingers and thumbs, everything in contact on top. All right? Now, you've had a look at the table, you're happy that's just an ordinary table. And I haven't prearranged anything with you. No, none of you are actors or studios. The same for all of you. Nothing's been prearranged with any of you, correct? All right, the rest of you. I need you to put your hands by your sides and just relax. And I want you all to take a deep breath in. And then let it out. And I want you all to look at the table. I want you to imagine, as you look at it now, I want you to get a sense of a life force, all right? An energy, a power, whatever you want to call it, that you create as you look there at the table. I want you to push that energy across the room from where you're standing into the table. Imbue it with that life force. Give it that life force. This is one of a handful of places, this room, where this phenomenon can occur. But you must concentrate. And I want you to place your hands on the table as I showed you now. Do that now. Place your hands on the table. Now you don't need to press. Just a gentle laying of the hands there on the table. Good. Now you can relax your breathing as you focus on the table. As you notice the life force in the table, it will start to move. This is strange. When it happens, you're just going to go with it. Everybody else just focusing on the center of the table too. you take, there it goes. Whatever you do, you don't push it, you just let it move, you let it do what it wants to do. Just keep with it, just keep following it. And absolutely feel that force in the table, which is separate from you. It's nothing to do with you, and you let that move, you let it go where it wants to. If it turns, you follow it. You don't push it, you don't pull it, you don't do anything, you just follow it as it picks up speed. And all the rest of you concentrating, watching and building up that energy in that table. This table, this apparently inanimate thing bursting with life. Let's just break the circle here. I'm going to take you, I'm going to put you right here, all right? I want you to call that table as if you were calling a child. You're just going to say to it, I'm here. Just keep saying it as if, you were, here. As if you were here. calling a child. I'm here. Over and over again, I'm and here. the table will come. I'm here. Keep it going, Lindsay. I'm here. Let it find you. Think of it like a child. I'm here. Talk to it like a child. I'm here. Now over here, over here, opposite side. Stand back, take a gap. Chris, all right, Chris, just call it, call it to you. I'm here. Call, call it. I'm here. Say, I'm here. I'm here. Call it. I'm here. Like you're talking to a child. Here, here. it comes. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Just gonna let it rest. Now tell it to stop. 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 Okay. You can let go for me. Oh God. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> let me just verify before we go any further. None of you were pushing, correct? No. no. Nobody was pushing? No. If you were, say so. Be honest. No, no. no. All right. Everybody else, now you want to all grab a table. There are some around the side here. Four people to a table. If you all want to grab one, arrange the tables in a circle. Excellent. Do you want to come put that one here for me? All of you, just take a moment. All the tables in place. All right. Turn and face your tables. Have a look at the center of your table. Take a deep breath in now. Just get that life force in the table. Just see it there in the table. And out and place your hands on the table now. Okay. Keep your eyes focused on the center of the table. Just start to feel it moving through the table. When it goes, you must just follow it. It is odd, 
But when your table comes alive, you must just move with it and you must just follow it. Let it go wherever it wants to go. It's starting off over here, great, that will start to spread around the group. As soon as you feel it go, you must just let it go. As soon as you feel it. You might find it turning or tipping, that's great. Doesn't matter if you bump into other people. There it goes, it spreads around, getting faster. And faster. And just wait for it and start to feel it. It'll take you by surprise, that's what happens, all right? Doesn't matter if you're the last person to move, doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you're the last table to go. Let them have a life of their own, you just follow them. <laughs> Let them take you where they want, the table alive between your fingers. If it falls over, just pick it up, it'll carry straight on. Excellent, great, you're going. Just keep in contact with it. As the energy builds, and builds, and takes you wherever the table wants to go, that energy builds, and then suddenly disappears. And the tables will come to a stop. As soon as it stops, move away from the table. Let's move away from the table, stand back. And then give yourselves a huge round of applause, that was fantastic. Those tables were definitely possessed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way you can describe it. One minute they were dead, the next minute they were off. When Darren was doing it with like the people in the middle and we were looking at the table, it's like, oh yeah, them people can do it. You know, you know, he just chose them out, yeah. but then we all did it. It was phenomenal, actually. We were just, our fingers were just touching the tables, and then all of a sudden it just started to move. We went, whoa. <laughs> Wherever the table went, we were just being pulled with it. Oh, I, I've never felt anything like it. It was, it was really <laughs> bizarre. I could feel my whole body shaking. It was, it was, it was an indescribable <laughs> feeling. I was like, oh. <laughs> Which way the pleasure beach is? Is that is it down that end? Down it's right down right that way. The the so is it? Sorry, can I grab that for a second? Can I grab you, your wallet or something off you? You got a wallet on you? No. Oh, keys? Nothing. Okay. So it's literally just down that end, and it's, it's the big Ferris wheel, isn't it? It's just down there. So you just keep it. All right. All right. You'll see it beyond the All right. Cheers. Thank you.